so much for uh, the uh, theoretical model of uh, uh, natural resource extraction and, and pollution. Now we are going to see how this can be applied specifically to climate change and uh, we are going to um, to study the model of Nordhaus, the model f with which Nordhaus won the Nobel Prize. Uh, we we'll see the scenarios that are typically run with uh, this model and, uh, and the output uh, of the model, so the main results. And then we going a bit to have a little excursus on climate change specifically and seeing where uh, which is the situation now with climate change where where are we this if uh, we are uh, uh, close or uh, diverging from what uh, the dice model suggests and uh, uh, how we arrive there in terms of uh, uh, the political di dimensions uh, of the climate change uh, problems and we'll finish this part with uh, the analyze of uh, one single aspect that is uh, crucial that is the uh, way that the pollutants in this clay in this case greenhouse ga gas uh, decay uh, with time. The model of uh, Nordhaus, the dynamic integrated uh, model of uh, climate and uh, the economy, has the specific objective to find uh, the optimal policy response to uh, climate change. And uh, it, it shares many of the uh, characteristic of the model that uh, that we saw in the previous slides. Here I reported some, uh, a cit citation from uh, from uh, the documentations, where it, the model assumes a, a single commodity which can be used for consumptions, investment, or abatement. That's exactly the uh, the the model that uh, that we use the approach that we use uh, the, in the model we saw and uh, the characteristic of uh, of this model the the reason for which he won the nobel prize is that it has been the first model to integrate the physical aspect within a economic uh, uh, framework so there are uh, what what I mean for these sophisticated science components uh, is that uh, when we see the um, when in our model that we saw we have the um, the damage functions of the utility or the production uh, of, or the production function or the level of uh, uh, of, uh, of the level of environmental pressure given by the uh, extraction or consumption of the resource, we saw in a very reduced format. But at the heart of these functions, there are some physical or biophysical processes. And uh, these are not made uh, by Nordhaus, but Nordhaus take the results and uh, integrate these biophysical processes in these equations and uh, and hence integrate the biophysical aspect within uh, the economic estimations and uh, the result is uh, is that using this um, the, the, mo the his model he can uh, estimate uh, the um, efficient emission uh, redu reduction schedule where efficient here again is efficient because it is uh, uh, the pathway where uh, marginal uh, cost of uh, mitigate equal to marginal benefits. And on this one, I this aspect I would like to highlight this aspect because it's also some of the critics of uh, his approaches because uh, compared with other uh, studies, the studies of Nordhaus, Harlow a little relatively high level of, uh, of uh, pollution of uh, emissions compared with other studies because 
he stress more than the others that the cost of uh, uh, the, the benefits of mitigates are associated to some cost to mitigate so the optimal uh, choice would not be to stop straight away extraction of fossil fuels and uh, move to something else because that would have been a huge cost but is to gradually go toward that objective and how you do that well you do that for a public perspective doing exactly what we saw uh, introducing some uh, carbon tax that would bring uh, uh, an efficient outcomes that is the will bring private cost equal to social cost. Compared to the model we saw, so uh, the uh, DICE model has uh, a biophysical uh, uh, part uh, more uh, uh, expressed in a, uh, in a more explicit uh, form. And in particular, what is important is the presence of different reservoir of, uh, of carbon that in his models are the atmosphere where we want to get rid of the carbon, the upper oceans and the, and the biosphere together because you will see that the exchange here is very, is very uh, high between them and then the deep oceans for which the carbon instead uh, the exchange of carbon with the atmosphere and the upper oceans and the biosphere is much more limited and the uh, carbon can flow between the different reservoirs as i say here the mixing uh, between deep oceans and other reservoirs is extremely slow so uh, carbon uh, emissions increase uh, um, the accumulation of greenhouse gas uh, change the radiation balance of the of the globe as you surely uh, know the physical uh, aspect of climate changes those that the uh, the radiations arrive on on the heart and then normally with a different uh, uh, length uh, is uh, uh, radiated outside but if you have climate you have a greenhouse gas this one somehow is trapped and go back on hurt and this is and this b physical process is embedded in the uh, radiative forcing equations that depends on the accumulation of greenhouse gas and then the other <laughs> very important physical aspect is after you have an increased uh, radiative uh, uh, radiation, uh, net radiation on the health, how this will change the climate essentially uh, is here. This is the result, he take the result of uh, uh, climate models. And uh, with these, uh, uh, these models is uh, uh, able to uh, to go uh, through this uh, uh, further step. Uh, as in other models, the only greenhouse gas that is analyzed is the CO2 emissions. Why is that? Why is not methane? Also methane is a very strong greenhouse gas. But the very important of CO2 is that while the other uh, uh, emissions of uh, uh, the other kind of greenhouse gases are uh, um, likely to be controlled and uh, the increase is not uh, uh, is not um, uh, is not yet going uh, uh, increasing a lot but is somehow stabilizing if we see the long term pathway we see that there is a stabilization of the other greenhouse gas we can say that from uh, from uh, co2 uh, where e even now in 2018 uh, time i'm um, uh, recording this slide is just went out cop 24 in uh, in poland and uh, the emissions uh, uh, last year are uh, still the highest uh, emissions of uh, CO2 never recorded on, uh, on history.
So from what the CO2 emission will depend uh, on? On one side, the emission will depend on the total level of the economic activity and uh, the level of the population. Together, these two factors determine the total output of uh, emissions to the atmosphere. But uh, this emission will depend also on how much emission uh, uh, intensity will be the economy, so how much green will be the economy in terms of uh, CO2 emissions. And this is something dyn dynamic in the model to consider better uh, efficient in the future, uh, but it's still uh, something uh, that remains uh, exogenous in, uh, in the model, it is something that uh, is a critic of, uh, uh, criticism of, of uh, the DICE model. And uh, finally, it will depend on what is the main uh, control variable of, of the model that is uh, uh, determined in terms of uh, the climate change policy that uh, is eventually introduced and that will reduce these, uh, uh, these emissions. So there is uh, uh, two main functions uh, that are calibrated from uh, uh, from uh, uh, real data one is the cost of the damage so uh, how much uh, so there is uh, estimations of how much the uh, co the the, the um, CO2 that enter the atmosphere and uh, the uh, global warming that is consequent create in terms of damage to the society, the two damage that we saw in our models of the production function and uh, directly on the utility of, uh, of people, if you uh, recall the structure of the model that uh, uh, we presented. But also there is a function of how much that abutment itself cost. So as we saw uh, uh, in our model, also mitigation as a cost and uh, and reducing the uh, the emission uh, as a cost. So there are these two main uh, uh, functions of uh, that returns uh, a cost: the damage on one side and the abatement on the other. And uh, the basic uh, uh, idea is that the damage will start to be gradual when climate change, when the warming is uh, limited, but the increase uh, will be uh, uh, more than uh, linear when uh, uh, climate change will, uh, will, will continue. So if it's a, a structure is very similar to the uh, aggregate pollution model that uh, we studied, where there are some uh, difference. The first one is that uh, uh, in the DICE model, uh, uh, there is back a, a, in a, a explicit form a, a production function, in this case, a Cobb-Douglas, uh, that is function of uh, capital uh, labor that in turn depends from uh, uh, the uh, populations and, and, and energy. So these are the production factors of the Cobb Douglas uh, uh, production function uh, in, in the DICE model. The second difference is that uh, the control variables are somehow put in a different way. We had the uh, consumption as control variable. Here they have uh, uh, instead the, the, the saving rate for, uh, for the capital. Uh, it's very equivalent because in our model everything that is not uh, uh, consumed uh, goes to increase the capital. And the second uh, uh, control variable is uh, indeed the one, the emission control rate that uh, we, we, we named here. So how much the policy should be strong in terms of uh, uh, forcing uh, 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 abatement of uh, the uh, emissions. Other differences concern uh, the uh, the objective functions that uh, uh, in the f in the model that is described here in the DICE 2007 is in terms of consumption, but I in the more recent uh, uh, if you look the the GitHub for the source code for the most recent U uh, code for the more recent versions now also for the DICE model is expressed in terms of utility so. This actually is no longer true. Uh, the, uh, there is 
contrary to our model, a backstop technology so uh, that the, uh, the carbon price cannot go over a certain uh, level. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, backstop technology as again a dynamic feature of declining the price, but again, it is something that is uh, declining in a fixed way exogenous to the model. A technical uh, note, it is uh, expressed in uh, discrete uh, rather than in continuous times. And perhaps more importantly, the, we, we, in our very simple model, uh, if you recall, the decay rate of uh, the pollutants of the greenhouse gases was, was constant. Well, here, again, I have to say in an exogenous way, but it's varying and uh, 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 the de this decay rate uh, is, is, is not constant m but the uh, uh, de uh, decrease uh, uh, we decrease with uh, with uh, time.